Alright guys, it is another gray, sticky, yuck, summer day here in the end times. I guess we have survived the, uh, the big fizzle of Hurricane Henri. I'm glad to announce the big fizzle did not materialize here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. And uh, so it is now Monday starting a new week and uh, I don't even know where to go with the mainstream media this Monday morning. You know, trying to, from this point forward, trying to figure out the difference between the mainstream media and the onion. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't even know where to start. I'm just going to share a few of them because I can't choose which one that I... I think I figured out the one we're going to uh, we're gonna we're gonna center on space aliens today. You know, uh, I have a request from somebody whose name I don't need to mention that I need to do more space alien coverage on Humpty Dumpty tribes. So your former alien abductee. Well, get around to space aliens, but, but, but here's a few other things. Right here today uh, on the mainstream media, Marines used to drink cobra blood during military exercises. Not anymore. This is coming from uh, Men's Health Magazine. And this is a picture of uh, a Marine drinking cobra blood. And this used to be one of those things they did to uh, prove what a man you were, is they would uh, kill a cobra and pass it around. But I guess they're worried about co cobra panic saying they're, they're afraid. The reason they stopped it was because they didn't want to, uh, you know, cobra blood to start the new corona panic. So anyway, good news for the cobras on the planet. All right, guys, I made it about a third away from this. This is from these lefties over at the Daily Beast. Lefties. It was not the right wing. It was those damn lefties planted the anti-science seed fueling vaccine skepticism. This is some lefty named Louis Anslow in this book-length book -length article blaming it on the lefties for it is not uh, the right wing. Anyway. Here is a shocking headline. You will not believe this. This is from, uh, just straight from Yahoo News. Study finds U.S. kids eat mostly junk food. Yes. Uh, and this is actually a corona panic. I and mean, even before the corona panic, this is talking about specifically since the uh, the the corona panic has upended much of the lives of children and their diets too. One recent study found that after one year of living in the corona panic, one in three pediatric patients was above their expected weight, a 41 percent increase in fat kids from before the pandemic. Another study found that two-thirds of U.S. children's calorie intake comes from ultra-processed foods defined as ready-to-eat foods that contain little to no whole foods such as frozen pizza, chips, and cookies. There you go. So uh, here are six tips here are six tips to reduce sugar in kids' diets. Now, Caleb was, Brother Caleb was here when I f was reading this story, and he immediately understood the number one tip to reducing 
sugar and kids diets nowhere on the list of six uh, the number one way to reduce sugar in kids diets is don't have kids okay a, a kid who is never born can never you know be a fat little clueless moron cavity ridden uh, ADHD diabetes stricken little uh, fat ass nowhere mentioned that one gee hunger season looms in Madagascar bad news for the uh, bad news for the uh, lemurs how about big oil coined the term carbon footprints to blame us for their greed. This is uh, from the Guardian, this interesting piece out of the Garden Guardian. Uh, <clears throat> it turns out that the concept of the carbon footprint, that popular measure of personal impact, was the brainchild of an advertising firm working for BP as Mark Kaufman, whoever that is, wrote this summer. So this is an excerpt from this article or book by whoever Mark Kaufman wrote. Quote, British Petroleum, the second largest non-state-owned oil company in the world with 18,700 gas and service stations worldwide, hired the public relations professionals Ogilvy and Mather to promote the slant that climate change is not the fault of an oil giant, but that of individuals. It is here that British Petroleum first promoted and soon successfully popularized <coughs> the term carbon footprint in the early aughts. The company unveiled its, quote, carbon footprint calculator in 2004, so one you know, a normal person could assess how their normal daily life, going to work, buying food, and gasp, traveling, is largely responsible for heating the globe. And so, um, what this article is, you, you know, it's, it's taking this either or approach. Whose fault is it? Is it the large corporations making the stuff or is it the individual corp individual consumers buying the shit that the planet eaters make this raging debate i am going to vote on the side of uh of uh ayn rand how many times have i mentioned this in 1957 ayn rand put it out there in 1957, anybody blaming the corporations for all of the world's problems, uh, as Ayn Rand was explaining in 1957, that was 64 years ago, there is one way, and one way only, there is one way to put the giant corporations out of business, that is to stop buying their products. If you and I and everybody on the planet stopped buying the Planet Eaters products, particularly the oil company's products, they would go out of business, the global industrial economy would collapse overnight, and 90% of human beings on the planet would be dead within six weeks. Anyway, we were supposed to be talking about space aliens. I love this debate. This is another one. Denser cities could be a climate boon, but nimbyism stands in the way. And again, guys, this is... Uh, I actually agree 
that uh, that making you know packing humans into cities would have would have a net beneficial effect on the planet and our fellow earthlings uh, but but anyone who acts like building bigger denser cities is going to save the planet uh, I, I, I got some bad news uh, but I'm actually on the side of uh, if I had to choose sides on this debate no shit Sherlock if, if, if every human being on this planet had 14 acres of land like, like I do anyway uh, okay this one I decided is going to be my Collapse Chronicles rant, so I'm actually going to have Andy the Gardener team up with me, but you have to come over to Collapse Chronicles where uh, that little eco pussy Sam Mitchell, with some help from Andy the Gardener, is going to go over this story, COP26, a no-nonsense guide on what we can expect. Yes, a no-nonsense guide on what we can expect from the 26th uh, Climate Summit. Spoiler alert, the same thing that we could expect from the first 25. Okay, any, anyway, shh. That was a spoiler alert. You'll have to come over to Collapse Chronicles for the full rant on that. Um, okay, but where was it? From HuffPost, no less. HuffPost, we are going to uh, center on this story. This is from the Space Alien Desk. E.T. Phone Hell. Creationist Ken Ham says Jesus cannot save space aliens. This is what HuffPost has to say about this subject. Creationist Ken Ham, who built a giant Noah's Ark themed attraction in Kentucky, said he does not think there is life outside of Earth. And if such life existed, they should not expect any form of salvation from Jesus Christ. Quoting Ham on Twitter, Jesus came to save us. He came to save us, not to another planet, to save another ream, race of beings. Adding that it is clear, quote, salvation through Christ is only for the Adamic race, close quote, the Adamic, A-D-A-M-I-C, if you don't know what uh, what the Adamic race is, it is human earthlings. The Adamic race, yes. Jesus only is interested in the Adamic race. On the bright side, however, Ham said they won't need redemption anyway since they don't exist. The Bible, according to his strict interpretation, says only earth was made to be inhabited. Quote, and the other celestial bodies were created for signs, seasons, days, years, and billionaires. Hmm. Ham was responding to a recent poll that found deeply religious Americans are less likely to believe in, intelli in intelligent life outside of Earth. I want to believe in intelligent life on Earth. Anyway, uh, he has made similar comments before, writing, quote, Jesus did not become the God Klingon or the God Martian. Only descendants of Adam can be saved, close quote. <clears throat> but not all Christians agree with Sam, with Ham. I love that name, Ham. His name is Ham. <clears throat> Pope Francis, for example, has said that he would baptize Martians if they came to Earth and asked him. Quote, quoting Francis, Who are we to close the door? Yes. In 2008, Jesuit father 
Jose Funes, who at the time was the director of the Vatican Observatory, said space aliens would not be inconsistent with the Bible. Quote, this is not in contrast with the faith because we cannot place limits on the creative freedom of God. To use St. Francis's words, not Pope Francis, St. Francis, if we consider earthly creatures as our brothers and sisters, why can't we also speak of an extraterrestrial brother, close quote. Funes added that such aliens may not even need redemption from Jesus. Hmm. Space aliens might not even need redemption from Jesus who may have come to, they may have come to earth only because humans are the, quote, lost sheep of creation. Quoting uh, Bishop Funes, quote, God became man in Jesus in order to save us. So if there are also other intelligent beings, it's not given that they need redemption. They might have remained in full friendship with their creator. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen, brother. Yes, uh, space aliens may not need redemption. They might have remained in full friendships with their creator. Yes, the late evangelist Billy Graham also felt similarly, quote, I firmly believe there are intelligent beings like us. Well, if they're like us, they're not very, you know, anyway, I firmly believe there are intelligent beings like us far away in space who worship God. Yes, he once said, adding that there is no need to fear such beings since they are also part of creation. Ham's fundamentalist view of the Bible has led to odd exhibitions at his Noah's Ark themed attraction, including dinosaurs. I did not realize that there were dinosaurs on Noah's Ark, uh, which Ham believes lived alongside humans on a planet he claims is only about 6,000 years old. Most scientists believe Earth is about four and a half billion years old, and nearly all, nearly all scientists agree that dinosaurs were wiped out around 65 million years ago, long before the first humans appeared. And you know, uh, I know she's not listening, so, I can tell this story on my, my trump tarred friend. Uh, you, you, you know, my best friend on the planet, the closest woman I've ever had to being my soulmate. And we're always going to be soulmates, I guess. So, you know, she's voted for Donald Trump twice and we'll vote for him for a third time. But we had this argument one time. This is, this is a college educated uh, woman uh, who is telling me that I do not know with a capital K that dinosaurs and humans did not coexist at one time on this planet. You know, she, she goes, Hambone, you're probably right. Okay, you are probably right that uh, dinosaurs and humans have never walked the planet together, but you cannot know that it is. And I said, darling, as a matter of fact, I can, I know with a capital K that dinosaurs never walked uh, the earth or planet, the planet with humans. And she goes, well, why do you still, why are you on the fence about Bigfoot? Uh, and, and, and claiming that that Bigfoot might not be extinct. And, and I, and you know, and about Bigfoot uh, walking the planet with humans, and I pointed, I, I, I said, darling, the, the margin of error with uh, a Bigfoot is maybe 6,500 years. How long ago did did Australo 
Gigantopithecus, whatever it is, supposedly go extinct. I said that margin of error is probably about 6,500 years, and you're talking a margin of error of 65 million years. But uh, she had no interest in my margin of error because nobody knows. You cannot prove that humans and dinosaurs never walked the planet together. And uh, but anyway, I've got to wrap this up because uh, I realize I'm talking to myself and maybe one other person on the planet. But we're going to uh, change shirts here and come back. And this is from Country Living. Country Living. And we're going to look at COP26, a no-nonsense guide on what we can expect. But you have to go over there to Collapse Chronicles and find that coming up in one minute. Little dog, we have to do our Collapse Chronicles rant now. You're not ready to get off this table. Bye, guys.